Come on, let's everybody, let's stand to your feet. Let's receive him. And let's receive the word of God on this morning. Pastor Nathan Salter. Come on, let's give it up for him. Thank you. Amen. Let's give God another hair praise, everybody. I'm excited. I'm excited about what God is going to do today. Uh, you may take your seat, please, because um, you're about to get some good food. So I want to get you, get you, get you comfortable. Uh, but first, I want to thank um, God for Pastor Lowe and First Lady Lowe. Let's give God a hand praise for them. They are such tremendous gifts to the body of Christ. And if they're watching, we love you here so much. And um, your sanctuary is filled with some amazing worshipers and praisers. So we just want to say we love you. We appreciate you. And I don't feel I don't take it for granted that you asked me to uh, speak for you in Jesus name. And I give God the praise for just just uh, um, look at somebody who looked better than you and say, I love you so much. <laughs> some of y'all didn't turn because y'all like nobody looked better than me. <laughs> <laughs> I was watching some of y'all. Some of y'all was like, some of y'all took your mirror out and said, I, I'm just teasing. But God is so good. Um, I am excited. Who's excited today? Now, y'all, those of you who know me, y'all know I I I don't really come until I got a package to deliver. And I got a good one tonight. Uh, not tonight. I'm still at last night at our church was so I'm still on the glory cloud. So y'all forgive me. The presence of God moved so strong last night. And um, I tell you, so um, but the Holy Spirit gave me something to get y'all today. So I'm excited because that means it's something you need it. And uh, it has changed. Now, I will start to say this before I share it, because it's going to be so good that it is something that has revolutionized my personal life. So I'm not going to just be sharing this from because it's a good message. I will say that this is a principle that what I was challenged about five years ago when I had an encounter with the Lord. And it was the hardest thing for me to do. But I promise you, if you listen to what the Lord say today, your situation can change so drastically. So drastically to the point that you you ain't gonna be able to, you will be afraid to tell people certain things because you're gonna be like, is this really happening? So raise your hand in here if you are expecting God to multiply some stuff in your life. Now, seriously, I mean, don't raise your hand if you I'm talking about raise a high. You if you looking for some crazy multiplication, raise both hands. Okay, so y'all the right people. I just want to make sure because I don't want to deliver the wrong package. <laughs> So some years ago, um, you know, you know, I've, again, I've been preaching for years, teaching for you. And but you move to a stage and I know our amazing Bible teacher here. She is such a let's give God a praise for a sister. Uh, Kahaifa. She is a gift to new beginnings in the body of Christ. And, and she can probably tell you and perhaps James could probably tell you any other minister that you get to a place where especially in your when you start studying the word. You get to a place where you're studying, you're reading, and you're, you know, dissecting stuff. But then there's a season God moves you to where it's more experiential. And then when you start experiencing the stuff that you've been studying, you had a, it's like everything looked different. There have been scriptures I was preaching, uh, Mr. Chuck, when I first got saved, that I had to go back and re-preach because after I lived it and saw him take the scripture, scripture off the pages into your life, your life, you never go back. And I, I got a tale of the Sunday school and it was so good. And how um, I think uh, Pastor James was sharing about how sometimes um, they don't stay long enough. And our brother was saying that they don't stay long enough. And, and that's really the thing, because I've learned that staying when you get saved and you come into the kingdom you have to, you're in a new kingdom. You're in a new country. So I teach the people about church this way. Imagine you, all you've been doing all your life is speaking English. And then you relocate to Italy. And you never spoke Italian ever. When you get to Italy, you can't just walk over to Italy and talk about, you know, we drive in the way I, we do it in America. 
I'm going to talk to everybody in English. People are going to be looking at you like, you in another country. The country you from don't work here. And you know what we do? We get saved and we bring that, the clubs. I try to bring, I try to bring the nightclub over to God's kingdom. He was like, oh, we don't do that here. And I'm like, but this is all I know. Oh, stay long enough and learn the new country. Learn the new culture. Stay long enough. And then all of a sudden you start saying things like, uh, I don't know if this is Italian or Spanish, but, you know, buenos dias. And, and people are like, oh, your, your speech is different because I stayed in that new. So for those of Sunday school, I, I just want to confirm what they were saying, that it's the staying in this that you start to pick up the culture of your Lord. All right, let me give you all this package. That, that wasn't the package, but that's preparing you for the package. All right, so uh, let's bow our heads. Father, we thank you for your grace and your mercy. God, I thank you for what we are about to eat. And Lord, I thank you that not one person in this place is going to leave the same way. Thank you for our new beginnings as of today. And Father, I thank you that we will be completely obedient to the instructions you give us today. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, uh, please, uh, those of you who have your Bibles, I'm just going to take you to a passage of scripture. It's, I'm asking God to give me the, uh, the grace to give this to you because it's too much. And I don't want to, um, I, I, it, it's so much that I, I, my prayer is to give it to you in a short period of time where it makes sense to you. And, and because it's, it, it, this can be a 30 week series, but I'm going to try to give it to you in, in today so you can go home. All right. So I'm going to bring your attention to Luke chapter five. I just, and, and today I, I really want you to see yourself in this because we're going to talk about something that is going to really blow your mind. All right. So we're going to read, um, verses one, through verse 11. And if you have your Bible, you can stand because if I was you, I would stand for what you're about to get. I'm going to honor this word because this thing is about to change your life. Look at your neighbor say, your life about to be changed. This thing is going to change your life. It says in, that, in verse 1, and it came to pass that as the people pressed upon him to hear the word of God, he stood by the So I want you to make this personal. And you have to say it in such a way that I don't care what you're going through, that nothing will change what you are about to say. Say, I serve the Lord of the fishes. We're going to say that again. I serve the Lord of the fishes. Okay, please have your seat. Now, let me dissect this. Now, you might, right now, it don't make sense, but watch, in a minute, you're going to be like, oh, I serve that. I serve him. So let me just give you a little history of what just took place in this story. Um, uh, Jesus is asking uh, Simon Peter um, to use his boat to, to share his, his message. Jesus' ministry is now beginning. And he uses, uh, as Peter, who was a fisherman, um, any business owners in here who own a business and run a business? Okay. So um, he, this is Peter's business. And Jesus said, hey, can I use your business to share my message? And Peter pretty much like, listen, go ahead, use it because it ain't nothing working for me. Jesus go finish his message. And then he comes back to the man who bar who gave Jesus the business and said, um, Jesus says, cast your net on the right side. Now, Peter, because he went to um, Fisher's University. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Fisherman University in, in Colorado. Y'all know that place, right? Where, where, where you get a doctorate in knowing how to fish. So F Peter have a doctor. He is, he's the highest ranking fisherman. He knows fish. He studied all type of fish. He has a degree in fishing, but that particular night he could not catch anything. And then here comes this man and tries to tell this fisherman how to fish. And he says, cast on the right side. And now Peter was out there, remember, guys, all night. And so Peter says what we would say, I've been toiling to keep my business afloat. I've been toiling, and because I know when to go out to fish, for some reason, they ain't biting tonight. They're not biting. I don't know what they're doing. And then when Jesus finished, Jesus says, go back in the same area. 
but go to the right side. And Peter was like, listen, listen, listen. You're talking to somebody who have six years in this thing, six years degree. And he says, but nevertheless, at your word, I'll do it. So this man goes back to his company, goes out there, and all of a sudden he throws his net out. And it was so much fish that he had to call for help. I don't want y'all to get happy yet. Because there's so much to this story I need to dissect for the because you're serving a Lord that is so powerful. And, and because I want you to look at all the bills and the things that you're worried about this week. And I want you just to remind you who you're serving. I've been to the Sea of Galilee. And I'm going to tell you all right now, it don't look like Lake Erie. It ain't that big. OK. It ain't as big as Lake Erie. Now, if I saw, if it was as big as Lake Erie or the ocean, then I can understand the story a little better. But when I saw the Sea of Galilee, I'm like, where would, so all these fish that he just caught was in that sea somewhere when he was toiling all night. They were there the whole time, Lisa. They were somewhere back there eating chicken. I don't know. I'm just, <laughs> Popeye's chicken or so. And they back there doing something, and Peter is over here doing something, and for some reason, they ain't coming to him. Jesus ain't out there fishing, and he just says, go to the right side. So let's do the math, guys. Let's do the math. Jesus' message was probably, when he was speaking on, 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 on the boat, Jesus' message could have been about maybe, let's just give him 40 minutes. So in 40 minutes, in the same area, there was no fish, but in 40 minutes, a multitude got there. So what happened in 40 minutes that these fish, this multitude of fish got to that side that Peter was just there 40 minutes ago and couldn't catch nothing? The Lord spoke to the fish and told the fish, fish, stay back there. Don't move yet. It ain't, see, it ain't time. And the fish was, okay, let's just swim in this. Let's just swim near Capernaum. Let's just go stay here in the Capernaum. And then when Jesus finished the boat, Jesus says, okay, fish, come over to the right. And the fish starts swimming to the right. And then Jesus, okay, stop, fish, don't move no more. No, move, move, this more, move a little bit more to the right side of the boat, fish. Okay, stay there, fish, stay there. Peter, go, go to the right side. You saw what just happened? He was directing the fish for Peter. The problem was Peter didn't see all this part. So when he told Peter to go to the right side of the ship, he spoke to the fish and told the fish where to be. Now, why did I say Lord of the fish? Because that ain't the whole story yet. There is another story in the Old Testament, by the, in, in, uh, and y'all know this story about Jonah. This prophet running away from the Lord. But something crazy happened in chapter 1, verse 17. It says, and the Lord prepared a fish. Wait a minute. Hold up. So you mean to tell me the Lord we serve is speaking to fishes? Yeah. Out of all the fish out there, this one fish was prepared. Don't worry. I don't need anything. They, they don't need they, This fish is like, why? Okay. My creator told me to go over here. So this fish was prepared. And the funny part about it was the same fish that was prepared to swallow up Jonah. That same fish, my brother, after he served his purpose, the, you go to chapter two, the scripture says, and the Lord spake to the fish and the fish vomited Jonah out. So not only is he telling fish where to go, he's also telling fishes how to spit you out. He's also telling fishes where to stay, how to get in your net. But our problem is we are so out here trying to fish for our own lives and our master says just trust me everything you're looking for is in me you can't catch the kind of fish I got for you keep toiling go ahead go ahead keep toiling so it sounds something like this why you worry about your life what you're gonna eat what you're gonna drink just just seek ye first why did he say that because he says you're toiling for something that I can speak to 
So you up here doing nine to five, six to 10, then 11 to seven to pay a bill that he can speak to. <laughs> because we are out here killing ourselves and he never told us to toil. We're toiling because we don't know the Lord of the fish. We have not said yes to the Lord yet. We're still our own Lord. That's why you're killing yourself. But when he becomes your Lord, guess what? The, when he's your Lord, your only thing that you got to do is say yes when he says something. If he says give them $10,000, your job is to say yes. If he says move to Texas, your job is to say yes. If he says go to the right side, your job is to say yes. If he says don't go nowhere today, your job is to say yes, Lord. But we do this. Jesus say, um, don't go nowhere. It's hot in his house. I'm getting out of here. I'm going because we he's not our Lord yet. That's why we're killing ourselves. So a couple of years ago, uh, 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 Sister Keisha, a couple of years ago, I got a revelation. I said, I've been teaching from this thing for a long time. I said, I'm a t I'm, I said, I'm go just instead of just being saved. Thank God I'm saved. And he he brought me out of darkness into this marvelous life. I said, now I, I need to make him Lord. There's a lot of people who saved, but he's not their Lord yet. Lord means owner, master, that you do whatever the Lord says. The Lord is responsible for you. You're not responsible for yourself no more. So that means your Lord already know everything your heart desire. Your Lord already said, trust me, I already know exactly where your house is. I already know where your, your next blessing is. I already know where your husband is. I already know where your wife is. I know where everything is, but the problem is you are your own Lord. So go ahead and you go after 20 relationships and everybody break your heart. Then you say, let me go to the pastor. Pastor, pray for me. Everybody break my heart. Oh, because you're your own Lord. You're your relationship Lord. So until you say, Lord. So I got crazy. And, you know, I told you my story. I was to the point where I was like, listen, uh, you know, back in the day, you know, I, I don't know what it was. You know, you'd be, oh, I know what I like. And, and you give me your number to different people back in the day. And you think that's what you like until y'all start talking? And you're like, oh, Jesus. Well, what did I just get? <laughs> A couple of screws ain't up in there. <laughs> and then you're like, how did I get in? Oh, because you thought you knew, meaning you're your own Lord. Until you start realizing you just got connected with a psychopath who's trying to kill you. Now your tires are being slashed because you said, I know what I want. And then you get to the place in your life where you say, Lord, I don't know no more. What do you have for me? Thank you. Let me let me speak to your fish now. And then your fish swims over to you. And when you see the fish your Lord got for you, you're going to be like, God, I thank you. Your fish is so much better than my little broken down hat. I <laughs> <laughs> now, it gets even better. There's another passage of the scripture where, where uh, uh, some people were hungry and, and all they had was two fish and five loaves. And Jesus was like, oh, this is no problem for me. But the people with him was like, hold up, we don't have enough. He was like, see, you, you're still your own Lord. You're still counting your own stuff. Your problem is you every day you go check your bank account. That's your problem. It's your bank account. That's why it's negative. So what I told my, my, me and my wife laugh. We have this policy. I told I told my wife all the time. I said we oh we don't spend we don't have an account. We don't have an account. When I need a purchase, I go get the Lord's credit card, and he don't even have a credit card. He just has a card. And it's funny. Can I tell y'all a quick testimony? I'm gonna be honest. The, my wife said um, I would like some new furniture for our bedroom. And I, this was, just, if she's watching, babe, this is true. This was just a month ago. So Sister Lisa, I'm like, okay, since I don't have my own, I don't have an account no more. I said, okay, which one do you want? So we go through it. She point out and it, it cost some money, right? So guess what happened? I just went and brought, I just went, and, I, I put, okay, thank you. Uh, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. 
I'm, I'm not my Lord no more. Do y'all want to know what happened? Can I tell y'all? I've been, I had something on Facebook Marketplace for almost three years that I've been trying to sell. Not a fish came on there to buy it. <laughs> I almost forgot the thing was in the garage. And do you know, all of a sudden, two, uh, three weeks ago, a guy uh, uh, hits me up all the way from uh, close to Niagara Falls, uh, like an hour and a half. And, and, and he says, um, is this available? And I'm, you know, I'm, I'm thinking, oh, I forgot. I'm like, I hope it worked. It's been there so long, I gotta retest. And I say, yeah, yeah. He said, can I come down and get it? And I'm like, is this a scam? Cause you know, he's about to pay some good money for this thing. And I'm like, he, now in my brain, I'm like, he can buy this brand new cheaper. What I'm selling, he could buy brand new cheaper. This man drove his own gas an hour away just to come to get this item. And when he walked up to it, I said to him, hey, are, you know, I'm interested. What, what are you going to be using this for? He said, oh, I'm, I don't know. I'm, I just got a, some land out there and I got a barn. I'm just going to put it in my barn. I'm like, you you drove all the way out here about to pay all this money just to put this in your barn. He said, yeah, my friend told me this is a good version. So, and the man put all his money and get in cash and said, whoo, 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 exactly the amount that I charged for the bedroom set. I didn't have to go to Raymore Flanagan. I didn't have to go shop around. I just said, okay, this is what you want. All right, that's not my Lord no more. So he sent a fish. This is too much for y'all. He commanded the fish to swim all the way to my marketplace. I hope y'all get this. Because when he's your Lord, he speaks to, we're trying to do all the networking. And he's like, stop it. You don't know nobody. Nobody want you. But if they want your Lord, your, they'll listen to your Lord. So just submit under your Lord and you can have everything the Lord has. <laughs> Did I? <laughs> this is testimony time. It's part of, all part of the message. So, so, so watch this. Another thing happened back in the day. This is going back to 2000. And, uh, I'm, I'm, uh, this is, this is some years, but it's just still funny because as I'm thinking about this principle, I'm like, this submitting to the Lord stuff is really amazing. So back in 2000, I want to say this was 13. Uh, I was looking for another car, and uh, you know, and I, at the time I was I was driving this uh, used white Ford Explorer, and I said, I'm gonna I'm gonna get me another car. This Ford Explorer, you know, looked like it's about to go see Jesus, and I, I need something else. <laughs> I go I go in prayer. Uh oh, see, this is about the, this is because I go to prayer to talk to my Lord. In prayer, guess what my Lord told me, Sister Keisha? Go on Craigslist right now. I go on Craigslist, Brother Chuck, and the first thing that appeared was this black Mercedes Benz. And, and back then I, I saw it and I'm like, I can't afford that. Listen to, listen to my, listen to my words. I, and I couldn't. <laughs> so I looked right past it and kept on going down to what I could afford. And the Holy Spirit said, go back up to the top and call that number. And I picked up the phone, listening to my Lord. And I, the guy was like, yeah, I just posted it up. You're the first person who called me. And he said, and, and why I was talking to him, he was getting beeps and texts and all from so many people who saw the ad. Everybody was trying to go down to get this. And I'm like, God, I don't need no Mercedes Benz. I just need a, a car. And the guy said, go, go into your savings, get $2,000 and go down there. This, trust me, he wasn't set up with no $2,000. That thing was high. So I go down there with $2,000 in cash. Walk up in that place, and I said, um, I'm the guy you spoke to. And he looking at me. He was like, okay, cool. He was like, man, you want to test drive it? So I'm driving it down Broadway Street, and I'm sitting there like, am I driving a Mercedes? What's going on? And like, I'm like, this man will be mad when I get back in total that I'm kind of short on what he asked for. <laughs> I mean, he asked it over what, yeah. Yeah, he asked it a lot. 
and I only have $2,000 cash driving, test driving a Mercedes Benz down Broadway. And I'm sitting there driving. I said, Lord, what in the world am I doing? And I'm just, and I turn back and I'm driving back to his shop. And, and he let he I walk, he's like, Yeah, so you want it? So we sit in his little his thing. And I said, I would love it. Um, but the only problem is I got two thousand dollars in cash. And the dude looked at me, he was like, Are you crazy? He says, Did you see the price on the thing? I said, I said, Yeah, but I got two. I got two thousand dollars. I just, I just, hey, I, you know. He stopped and looked at me. Go ahead, take it. I gave him that two hundred dollars and drove out of there with a, a a a black Mercedes Benz car, paid off for two thousand dollars. Now. When I was driving it around, people were thinking, man, you must have paid. And I'm sitting, I had to tell people all, all the details. They just, so people were thinking I was this multimillionaire driving through the city. But I'm like, um, <laughs> I just obeyed my Lord. So what am I saying? When he told me to go on that site, it was just like him telling Peter to go cast your net. And I could have said, just like Peter, I've told all night. But nevertheless, let me just take the 2000s since you told me, Lord, to go. You see what's happening? But our problem is, no, Lord, I know what I'm doing. And that's why we're in the state that we're in. There are some things already that your Lord says, listen, if this person could just know how to just shut their mouth and be obedient. The, I told you about my Israel trip. Did I tell you about that one time when I spoke here? Well, I'll just share it again. Uh, I've been always desired to go to Israel, right? And, and and back in the day, that was when I was broken and broke. I didn't even have a zero in my word broke, but uh, or an O in my word broke. And I'm going to be honest with you. I was putting $20 a week to try to save for a $5,000 trip. Y'all know how long that'll take me? Okay, y'all do the math. And back then, I wasn't making a lot. So I was putting $20 in this little envelope. And then by the time the month and I needed to take, I needed to use that same savings to pay off some bit. Because I got any help? <laughs> okay, y'all understand. <laughs> y'all understand me very well. So every time I got to about 80, I get a bill for 85. <laughs> so I'm still short. So I'm like, I ain't going to Israel. This must ain't going to be happening for the brother. Do you know, uh, the, again, I, I, I started to get, uh, build a life of prayer in my life. And I started to say, yes, Lord. Everybody say, yes, Lord. I started to say things like, yes, Lord, your will, your will. Do you know the next uh, two years after that, um, I, uh, it was funny because, you know, somebody actually handed me an envelope. And I'm thinking, you know, what is this? And I opened up the envelope and it said, pack your bags. You're going to Israel, full paid trip. Wow. I'm flying over to Israel. And it said, anonymous. And I'm flying over to Israel. I'm like, how in the world am I getting able to go here? And I wasn't toiling. I, was, I didn't toil for this trip. But when I was toiling, Sister Keisha, I wasn't going nowhere. And all I did was delight myself in the Lord. And he gave me the desires of my heart. Psalms 37, verse 4. I hope this is helping y'all today. And I had to share those testimonies because I just want y'all to know that I understand what it's like to toil because you're your own Lord. But at some point, you got to say, God, after today, I am so tired of living my own life. That's why the scripture says he who saves his life will lose it. But he who loses it actually finds it. So the one who starts saying, I don't got a life. My life is hidden in him. He's like, thank you. You can start living now. <laughs> you, I'm, who in, now, don't, don't, y'all, don't, don't play with me with this one. If you want to get married, if you single and you want to get married, please stand. Help us, Jesus. Okay, we got one, two. See, y'all plan. See, y'all are plan. That's why. That is exactly why he ain't our Lord. He, he like, okay, if you don't want it, I'm your Lord. According to your faith. Who here want to get married? Please stand. 
Don't play. Just seriously. Now, I promise you, I got good news for y'all. Very good news. He speaks to fishes, little animals that we eat. The God you serve can speak to little fishes. He speaks to ravens. He speaks to animals. And guess what? He'll speak to your mate on how to find you. I know you think I got to make it happen. I got to go out here and just date everybody every week on these dating sites. And, and you be at Walmart. And trip. Poop. Oh, let me help you up. And you like, whoo, Jesus. <laughs> Look at God. <laughs> Look what the Lord has done. <laughs> but why was he in that section of Walmart when you tripped? Because the Lord spoke to the fish. And told the fish, go down aisle 10 right now, right now. And the person walked down aisle 10 thinking they'd get some flour. <laughs> she said, I'm going to go to Walmart. Lord, help us. <laughs> but what I'm trying to show you is the reason why we don't live at that frequency is because he's not really our Lord yet. He's calling for us to say, yes, Lord, completely. And our problem is we're saving our lives. That's why we're losing it. We know how to shout. We know how to dance. But he's not our Lord. Until we say, yes, Lord, I, you, you, I don't even own anything no more. That's when you start seeing all this crazy stuff. Cars getting, you know, I did. Uh, I told, oh, yeah, I forgot to tell you about the other car. Jesus, have mercy. Back, back when I was, I mean, listen, y'all, I was struggling. And, you know, and God used my dad back in the day. Uh, my dad had this green um, pickup truck back in the day. And he was such a blessing to me because I had no transportation. I was really struggling as a young man. And I was just kind of new in the faith and really new to really trying to serve God. And it was kind of tough financially for me. So I couldn't really do much. I was walking to church and hitch, catching buses. I mean, that was just me. And do you know, um, <laughs> I, you know, my dad saw that I needed help, so he blessed me with this uh, with one of his work trucks. And you know, and I love my dad so much. Dad, if you watch it, I want to say thank you for that green truck. But I, but the truck. Let me just describe the truck. <laughs> it was this big green truck. I don't even know what brand it was, and it was. It, I was afraid to take it to get it washed because it has so much rust on it that I didn't want like Delta Sonic enough to be sweeping up a bunch of <laughs> metal chips off the ground because that truck was, the body of that truck was ready to, so y'all get a picture, right? And then when you turn to a corner, the door swings open. So I had to put a string on the door, on the driver's side door that don't shut. So y'all can imagine what it was like in the winter. I was driving with one hand, and, and, and then the snow was getting inside the window. because And I'm sitting up there getting my hands is freezing from holding the street, and I'm trying to turn this big old. Uh, and it was a two-wheel drive, not a four-wheel drive. So I used to get stuck a lot in the snow. So I, it was a, but hey, thank God for that little blessing, right? Do you know after a little while, I was faithful to go to work. One day somebody came to me and said, hey, after work, I want you to come with me. I'm like, okay. At the time, I'm really, I'm in Bible school. I'm trying to understand this new country I'm in called the kingdom of God. And I'm trying to learn his ways. And I don't understand what's that. So I go with this person. They take me to a car dealer. Pick out which one you want. I looked at him. I said, I, I did. I, I, and I was so messed up in my mind, y'all. Guess what I did? I knew which one I really wanted, Lisa. I knew when I went there, I immediately saw the one I like. But because I was, you know, I had that little, uh, uh, you know, I don't want to hurt nobody's pocket. So I'll go over to the, the cheapest one. I ain't like the way it looked, but it was cheap. But I was just like, I don't want this person to think that I'm being greedy. So I said, maybe that one. And he looked at me and says, you sure that's just like I was asking you, you sure that's the one you want? And in my heart, I was like, nope, I like that black one over there. That black, he said, go get it, go get it. And I thought he was still joking. So I go over there and I get it, I fit in it, everything's new. And I'm like, smelling new? I'm like, nah, mm -mm, this man playing with me. It's a trick. Do you know that man walked over to the dealer and said, we're going to take that one, wrote the check, I drove out of a brand new car.
Now, do you know what the Lord was trying to teach me back then? This was before I entered ministry. I entered ministry in 2004 as an ordained minister. He was trying to teach me like he was teaching Peter. Just, just listen to me. Just, just, I just need you to know that I'm bigger than your toil. I'm bigger than your business. I'm big. I speak to fish and I know that you need this car. So I'm going to command a fish just like I commanded that fish in Jonah, just like I commanded the fish in Peter. I'm going to command this fish to go buy you a car because you're submitted to my lordship now. And here my little toil and self. I'm my own Lord. I'll pray when I feel like it. Okay, go ahead. Go ahead. Begging for food. No, I ain't, I don't got time to pray. I got to go work. Go ahead. go ahead. I don't got time to study the Bible because I got to work. Okay, go, 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 go ahead. And, and then, so now I make more now and I, and I don't even, I pretty, I don't even feel like I work. I don't feel like I work. It's, it's like paying a bird to fly. He was made to fly. Why? And he just get the payment to do what God called him to do. That's that's what the Lord does to people who say, yes, Lord. Can I give you one more fish story? I don't know if y'all can handle it. OK. All right. Okay. OK. Keep going. My brother said keep going. All right. OK. OK. So in John, the same man we talked about in Luke. In John, Peter and the disciples walk with Jesus for three something years. Jesus dies on the cross and Peter and the boy says, I'm going to go fishing. They go right back to toiling. Hmm. And guess what, guys? After they walk with Jesus, so it shows you that you can be walking with Jesus and toil- go back right to your toil mindset. They went right back and started toiling again and caught nothing. Out there all night, and Jesus, their Lord, was on the shore looking at them, struggling. Hey, guys, cast the net on the right side. He says it again. Cast the net to the right side. And the boys and the guys on this boat was like, I remember this a couple of years ago. (laughs) Oh, and they cast the net on the right side, and guess what? They caught another multitude because they listened to the Lord. And not only did they get the multitude, Jesus says, come on, come on to the shore. Let's die. So these guys now bring the fishes they caught to the shore. And when they get to the shore, Jesus says, bring some of those, uh, bring, bring some of the fish that you just caught with you. And while he's bringing some of the fish he caught with you, Jesus is cooking fish for them on the shore. So the thing they are out here trying to work for, Jesus is cooking it for them, and they got some to bring. Your Lord is amazing. (laughs) It was in that moment that Peter was like, I can't deny that he's the Lord of the fish. I can't deny he's the Lord of the fishes because we saw him multiply two fish and five loaves and from eyes. I've seen him do what he did when he told me to cast my net. I've seen him multiply in front of the 4,000, in front of the 5,000 people. And I've seen what he just did today. And the scripture says, now Jesus says to him, Peter, do you love me? Because <laughs> he's now trying to say, Peter, it's time for you to just submit to my lordship. I'm going to take care of you. I I've, I've proved it to you that I'm the Lord of the fish. Just say yes to your assignment. And Peter, do you love me? Yes, Lord, feed my sheep. Because at this point now, he had to expose Peter that the thing that you want, I'm the Lord of it. I don't even want you to focus on the thing you want. Just focus on my agenda for your life. And I'll give you everything. I am telling y'all from personal experience, I can go from testimony after testimony of when I submitted to my Lord. I am going to get into some testimony because I'm I'm, some people can't handle it. Seriously, I'm being honest. There's some stuff I've just learned. Don't say because <laughs> you get enemies overnight. <laughs> so I've learned some stuff. Keep to yourself and just say, thank you, Lord. So a good friend of mine uh, recently just shared. Uh, he, 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 he was sharing with me the other day how um, <laughs> He, he was just saying, yes, Lord. He was just saying, yes, Lord. He wasn't even trying to toil. He's not even toiling. His toil is on his knees in prayer. 
So every day he meets with the Lord every day at the same time, three times a day just on his knees, just crying out, praying. And then when God gave him a word for somebody, he speaks. It. So one time he was uh, he, he God gave him a word for somebody and he just called the person, gave them that person that word wasn't thinking that he's just that obedient type. Do you know this? <laughs> he, <laughs> oh, Lord, help us. This this man sitting here in our area. And somebody calls him on Sunday of last week and said, you got a FedEx coming. So he like, okay, for what? Like, do you know that the man sent him two checks for $20,000? And the guy didn't have no clue that he and his wife needed to pay some major bills. And the man sent him two, not one, with, I don't. I, I hope y'all understand what I'm trying to say. When your the, with the Lord of the fish know your need, He don't need your input. He he like oh, I already know. I got. I'm gonna speak to this fish to give you what you need, and the fishes has to obey because they were created by Him. The only problem He having issues with our Creator. It's the people he made in his likeness called humans. Because we keep trying to be our own Lord. Fishes obey. The seas obey. The rocks cry out. But then we come to church and Lisa's up here jumping and we. He like, okay, y'all go ahead. That's your, there's too many lords in this building. When you see your Lord, you're dropping to your knees. You know why? Because you understand, I need whatever. I, I'm nothing without you. You're, you're the vine. I'm just branches. Who in here got a yes in their spirit? Who in here really ready to say yes? Because there is, it, it is funny because, uh, you know, I, okay, let me give you one more story and then I'm, I'm, I'm going to pray. Are y'all being blessed by this? <laughs> I just, I just, just to check in because I've already, my Lord, there's something right now. I told my wife the other day, I said, babe, my Lord said something to me. It ain't my job on how it's going to come. I'm not even about to go look for it. He said something to me, not to a couple, and I told my wife, I said, babe, we got to get ready for this. It's coming. And I don't know. So uh, it's funny because the other day, uh, and I was telling my wife two months ago, I said, babe, I kept feeling this. I keep feeling, I, I, my Lord, keep, I feel this expectation. I don't know what's about to happen. I said, but I feel it. And, I, and me and her was praying at the house. And do you know, uh, 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 the friend I was telling y'all about the, 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 <laughs> the man, he calls me and me and him had a meeting with someone the other day. I'm sitting here saying this. I'm like, oh, what are you doing? Like, I couldn't have done this in my own strength if I paid. I couldn't have, I could not have been sitting in front of this person if I, I couldn't have made enough phone calls to get this meeting. And I'm sitting here talking to somebody who is like, at whatever you want, write it out. Wow. And can I tell y'all the truth? I'm, I'm a little scared because I'm like, how much should I? He, just write it out. And I'm sitting there like struggling, like, uh, <laughs> um, okay, give, give it, give it to me by next week. So I got a couple of days to write out something. <laughs> this is too much. I, I don't know. I don't know. They say, okay. Um, kind of like the car situation, you know, how we like to go to the smallest thing. I, I find myself struggling with that again. I'm, maybe, you know, Write it out. I, and my Lord said, I sent that fish. I sent that fish to you. And you're afraid? This fish was prepared. Like the one in Jonah? Just for you. <laughs> and I'm sitting there, and I got a couple of days to tell this fish. <laughs> what? Because I don't own myself no more. I've been bought with a price. Let me give you this and then we're going to go. There is a story in the scripture in Matthew chapter 17 
where Jesus or Peter, the same guy, Peter, some, some people come to Peter and says, hey, um, do your teacher pay tributes? And Peter was like, yeah. You know, and this tribute they were asking for is called temple. It, it was for the, uh, the taxes for the temple. So this yeah. is different from the yeah. other tax. And Peter was like, yeah, yeah. my master pays it. And then he was like, oh, okay. So Peter leaves. And then as soon as he walks in the house, Jesus says, hey, Peter, um, do you think these people who's asking for these taxes, do you think their children pay taxes? And Peter was like, no. And he says, yeah, because they're, they're children. The children are free from all this. And he said, but Peter, just so we don't offend them, <laughs> go to the sea. Take your net, take your fishing rod, and go fishing. And the first fish you catch, open the fish mouth. And you go find in that mouth a golden coin yeah. enough to pay for me and yours. So Peter, who's listening to his Lord, goes out there and goes, whoosh, whoosh, catch this fish, open the fish's mouth, and the golden coin is. And then Peter takes his IRS, his IRS taxes yeah. and go to the IRS and say, here, here go, here go our payment. And I know Peter's like... How did he know it was in, do you know how many fish is in the sea? How did he know, how did this Lord of the fish is so amazing? So guess what he had to do to get this to work? All these fish in the sea, and one of these fishes, somewhere in this, in this story, one of these fishes found a coin down in the sea. And that one fish said, oh. And what Jesus was saying was, okay, no, um, um, Uncle Papa, you move. Um, Nemo, you go this way, and and, uh, and and I need you. You get in the front. Come on, come, come on, come on. And that fish is swimming in the front. And he don't know why he's swimming in the front because he know Peter about to come and get that coin. So if he's directing traffic for fishes, <laughs> this yeah, y'all not ready. <laughs> why are you up in here with your hands lifted? Worship at God, he's saying things like, no, 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 don't go down Genesee. Go, go down this street. Go to 251 Sherman and put it in that mailbox. And you up here going, you don't see that traffic being directed. You don't see that husband coming in your life. You don't see that wife coming in your life. You don't see none of this. You just up in here worshiping your Lord. And why you're worshiping your Lord saying, I don't own myself. He's going, fish. Okay, fish number one, go here. Move from Texas and come to Buffalo on this day because you got to meet this person. So all he wants us to do is just say, after today, I'm not putting no more energy in toiling. I'm going to put all my energy in saying, whatever you say, Lord. I'm submitting to your lordship. I'm not, I'm not my own lord after today. Now, I'm going to be honest. With you. Please don't stand if, if this is not you. If you still feel like you want to be your own lord, please stay seated. But if you are at the place where you say, I have nothing to lose, since I'm in his kingdom and since he's my lord, you take over my life. That's why he says, in all your ways, acknowledge your lord and he will direct your path. Oh, a sidebar, you are also a fish. Meaning sometimes he'll tell you, go here, bring $300 and go and give it to that person because you are the fish for that person. So he's directing traffic for all those who is under his lordship. Let us all stand for those who want to submit to his lordship. And you can use now, this is this is this is this ain't religious. So I don't want you to this ain't the general. Oh, let me just when you leave here, you got a decision to make. One of the lords are going to walk through that door. <laughs> you go take one lord with you out of here today. You or him. Because many people think because I'm saved, he's automatically my lord. It should be that way. But when you ain't listening, 
when you ain't talking to your Lord, when you ain't obedient, he's like, I never knew you. Because, you know, many is going to say to him that day, Lord, Lord. He going to say, wait, who? I, I don't know who you are. You I could not send fish to you because you were your own Lord doing your own thing. I'm only Lord of those who will say yes and listen. So everybody who's willing to say yes, I'm just going to encourage you to lift up your hands for a second. I'm not even going to direct you because I can't. I'm not the Lord. I'm going to give you an opportunity. I'm going to give you an opportunity to just say, just talk to your Lord and submit to him for a moment. I'm encouraging you to do that. Please don't even look at me because remember, I, I, I wish I could be your Lord, but I, I'm not. So I need you to just take a couple of minutes and just talk to your Lord and, and make it personal so where you're making a commitment today that as of today, you're my Lord. So go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. I'm going to give you a second. Ooh, y'all hear the quietness? Ooh, yeah, there's a lot of Lords in here, yeah. You see you see how hard we've been fighting to, because, you know, when, when we have to submit, when a one Lord have to submit to another Lord, it's hard to open their mouth. But when you're look, when you ain't fighting, you like, hallelujah, God, I need you. But, oh, it's, you know, so I'm going to give you a minute to lose your life in front of the real Lord. <laughs> I'll give you a minute. It, and you're going to know it because it's going to get louder. You ain't have nothing. To, who you, who, who you, who we impressing? That's our problem. I don't have nobody to impress no more because I am under his lordship. Hmm. <laughs> Actually, for a second, let's do no music. Let's do no music for a second. Because I, 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 your Lord needs you. He want to talk to you. Come on, I'm going to give you a second. Mm. Oh, y'all see? Y'all see the fight? You see the fight? You, you see the fight? The devil is like, don't, don't open your mouth. Don't open your mouth. I, I need your body to still do my dirt. <laughs> I need your body to do, your, to do my dirt. Don't open your mouth to this Lord Jesus. That's why he's trying to shut your mouth. You see what's happening? Listen how quiet it is. Listen how quiet it is. The, the dump, that's, the, that's the trick of the enemy. He's been trying to shut your mouth because you've been trying to run your own life. Now it's hard for us to say, yes, Lord. It's hard for us to worship the Lord. Mm. I'm going to give you a second. I'll give you a second. I'm going to give you a second. Ooh, yes, Lord. You're doing it, Lord. You doing it? You gonna know? You gonna know when you broke free because you ain't gonna be ashamed of how people hearing you. You don't care anymore. Our ego is getting away. That's the thing. Our ego say, "I don't, I don't want nobody to hear me worship." That's the problem. That's why no fish is coming. <laughs> God, I thank you, Lord. I praise you, Lord. You are my Lord. I'm not ashamed. I'm not ashamed to carry your name, Lord. I am not ashamed one bit, Lord. I love being called by your name. I love the fact that I can tell people that I serve the Lord Jesus Christ. I love the fact that I am a Jesus lover. I'm an, I love the fact that you is my savior. You my master. You my king. You my Lord of lords. You, Lord God, I thank you. You my protector. You my provider. I thank you, Lord God, that I don't have to seek these things of this world. I thank you, God, that everything I need is taken care of. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, those of you who really want him to be your Lord, I'm going to encourage you. I'm going I'm to I'm coach you. Let's open up our mouth a little bit louder. Come on. Come on. Come on. Those who want him to be your Lord, come on. Tell him. Let him hear you. Let him hear you. Your mouth was made to worship. Your mouth was made to praise him. And that is the thing that he's looking for because you know how to open your mouth for that other Lord. <laughs> Come on, come on. Let's 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 this is the Lord of the Rings right here. We one of these lords go die today. And I I don't know about you, but that other Lord that I was lead following, he gone. I want Jesus to be Lord. <laughs> I want to submit to Jesus. So if he says, break this relationship, yes, Lord. If he says, Don't do this sin, yes, Lord. If he says, give this, yes, Lord. Oh, 
God, we thank you. We thank you. We thank you. Come on, cry out to him today. Don't leave this place as Lord. Don't leave this place as Lord. Let him be your Lord today. Let him be your Lord. So, Father, tonight, today, I bless everybody today who have made a commitment that as of today, you are their Lord, you are their savior, you are their master, you are their protector, provider, their healer. Lord God, we are submitting to your lordship as of today, because as of today, we will say that you are the Lord of the fishes. There is no, if you can control the fish, you can control the checks. If you can control the fish, you can control the, the, the bosses. You can do all these things, God, that we're trying to do. All you want us to say is yes, Lord, and worship you. You just want our obedience, God. So, Father, today we give you our obedience. So if you tell us to leave, we'll say, yes, Lord. Yes. No more fighting your agenda. Yes. No more trying to get our own way. We're going to say yes to you. You are our king. And we submit to your rule. And in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, I want you to go and high five and hug three people and say, listen, today he is my Lord. Come on, tell, tell a couple of people, high five them and hug them and say, today he is my Lord.